ever since I got my CPU, I've been using the stock cooler that it came with. So I got this Gandia CPU cooler to see if I can improve its temperatures. The CPU cooler is supposed to be compatible with a bunch of different sockets, but I'm going to be using it with my 1700 socket, which is, does not list on the box, but it did advertise on Amazon that it supports, so we're going to go and see if it actually supports it. I didn't struggle opening the box too much this time. Now what came inside was actually this little box with the bracket and the, and the mount and the CPU cooler. No instructions whatsoever were included in the box. So if I install something incorrectly or it look like I don't know what I'm doing, that is why I normally read instructions, you know, most of the time, not all the time though. Okay, so it came with two cables, one for power and one for choosing the RGB. And there's the little piece of plastic that I'm going to forget to take off later on in the video. Opening up the box, you can see it comes with screws, some thermal compound included. Here's what the screws look like. And opening it up, we see that here are the different brackets that it supports. Uh, that's an Intel bracket, that's another Intel, and here's the AMD bracket. And it also came with the socket that, that you put on the back of the motherboard so that it can screw into. And you can actually manually adjust it to fit the socket that you're actually going to be using it for. As you can see from the Amazon listing, it says 1700 socket, and none of the bags say 1700, as you can see but it's supposed to support it so we'll go and see it also looks very similar to the deep cool uh, cpu socket i installed on my old pc except that it looks like it has a bit more aluminum and uh pipes are a bit thicker from, from what i can see I'm going to be adjusting the size of this thing, size he fits so that it actually properly fits. It didn't take too long to figure out, as you can see. Since nothing is labeled 1700, I'm going to be using these brackets for my CPU socket. The brackets for the 2011 socket don't seem to fit the mount, so good luck. When I was installing the cooler, it felt a bit too tight and it felt like I was like about to break the motherboard or the socket. So uh, yeah, be careful. This is what the cooler looks like inside your PC. It looks like there's a party inside my PC now. Remember, the RGB increases FPS. This is the idle temperature of my CPU with the stock cooler that it came with. As you can see, it's 37 degrees Celsius. I'm using the EVGA software to keep track of the temperature. This is the idle temperature with the new cooler. As you can see, it dropped 6 degrees Celsius. That may not be a lot, but we'll see later on. Now this is the temperature with the CPU benchmark, as you can see it's 74 degrees Celsius stock cooler. I'm using this benchmark because it makes your CPU at 100% usage. 
and this is the temperature with the new cooler as you can see it's 57 degrees celsius so we actually do see a big improvement in temperatures from one cooler to the other now this mesh bar even though it's supposed to be for graphics cards i'm using it for the cpu and as you can see the stock uh, cpu cooler is in the 50s 50 to 56 degrees celsius and this is the new cooler you can see the temperatures have dropped at least 10 degrees celsius from the previous one there's a big improvement uh, when you're benchmarking it and also frames increased this is where most of you are probably gonna notice the temperature change this is what the stock cooler temperatures look like as you can see they are in the mid 50s and this is temperatures with the new cooler as you can see temperatures are down 10 degrees celsius which is pretty good actually considering the cpu cooler costs like 40 dollars now this is going to be the end of the video thank you for watching any suggestions and questions leave them down in the comment section below